everyone. Welcome to Corn With Your Brunches, the show where we talk about foods that just don't go together. Uh, I'm your host, Nicole, and joining me this evening is my co-host, Kelly. Why don't you come on out, Kelly? Let's chat about some corn. No, that's cool. I have myself. Oh, there it goes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was like that's a new record for least amount of time bought for the the producer to play the song. So like that's you're always topping yourself, Nicole. I've always said this. Thanks. That uh, I mean, my goal is always to direct attention away from myself as fast as possible. So I think I'm really getting closer to my own goals. Um, thanks for noticing. Um, yeah, so like I, I'm really into. I, I love this premise you've given us. Foods that don't go together. Do you want to name some other foods that go don't go together? I'm gonna grab a beer. <laughs> All right. Um. So first list of foods that don't go together. Um. Beer and online shows. Um. Uh. Let's say syrup and roast beef. Um, is another solid one. What do you think? Carrots and Caesar dr salad dressing. You, wait, you wouldn't mix carrots and Caesar salad dressing? No. That's what weird. if you're having a Caesar salad and you've got your grater and you've got your carrots? I think that like, yeah, I don't know. There's something about carrots. I think you have to pick the lesser of two evils, not the greater. So, like, Nicole, I don't want to, like, throw you under the bus here, but are you telling me you've never been, like, a shitty, greasy, college-age single dude just kind of putting whatever is available into the salad? Um, yeah, I, no. See, that's the thing, is I was a shitty, greasy, single college dude, but I did not eat salads. I ate ramen and macaroni like a normal person. Yeah, okay, that's fair. I just feel like if you've never made an embarrassing bro salad before, like, I, it's a little elitist of you. An embarrassing bro salad? What's your no. What's your worst, like, what's the biggest food travesty that you've committed in your embarrassing bro salads? I don't know if it's the biggest food travesty, but the most, like, bro salad thing I've ever made was um, a friend and I were making a Caesar salad, which we're like, okay, we're gonna do chicken Caesar salad. We got chicken, and we got the we got bacon and being you know some like 19 year old dudes it was like heavy on the chicken and bacon and we figured well we've also got this you know this steak in the fridge so let's just cut it up into little steakums and throw those in the salad so it was kind of just a meat salad mm -hmm. yeah i feel like that one's up there meat salad title of your sex tape um <laughs> that's right i uh yeah see i guess i associate like carrots with like ah we don't have to go there um <laughs> Yeah, I no, don't know. let's go there. Um, I was just thinking of a uh, true story. Um, we were, I was out uh, in the bush for Thanksgiving. Uh, my dad has like a hunting camp every year, and someone brought a giant carrot, and rather than eating it, we carved it into a butt, butt plug shape and spent the evening like placing it strategically on people's chairs when they stood up to go to the washroom. Hmm. So I guess I just don't associate it with salads. Um, that's more of, a, more of a prop for me, but. Well, I think this is a great question, which is what's the biggest food Travis you've ever made? I feel like this would be our, this would be a great question for our guest. So let's bring out our guest, Mitch, who's a motivational speaker. Well, I hate everything about that. Didn't even <laughs> let the song play out. And, you know, like I was hoping we would get to the end of the song until we kind of took the wind out of everyone's sails. No guests tonight. Um, yeah, enjoy the show. I'm just going to kick back in the cut here. Um, David is taking over as co-host. And uh, yeah. Awesome. Uh, yeah. How's it going, Nicole? Oh, not so bad. You got um, real Obi Wan Kenobi look going on. That's what it is. Obi Wan, it, is it because of the like drapey white 
It's the baby white shirt, the hair pulled mm -hmm. back. You got a real young Obi Wan Kenobi or Qui Gon Jinn, maybe one of those two. I'm not a nerd. Right, you just own a board game shop. That's a super non nerdy thing to do. I'm a businessman. Mm -hmm. I'm being told we're no longer on Twitch. That's fun. Oh. Well, that's all right. Um, no one needs to watch this crap. Um, watch something educational. So what's the biggest food travesty that you've ever committed, David? Oh, he's gone. He's gone. He's gone hard. Something <laughs> very dark has happened. Uh, so tonight, playing the role of David will be Josh. Oh, no, I can't play that from the beginning. No, no, do it again. We need to get a we need to get a clean cut of that. Yeah, that's right. All right. No, I said we're bringing out Josh. It, it, it's ex here. especially confusing when we keep uh, announcing uh, different people and it's just David every time. This is what happens when the guest doesn't show up. It destroys the fabric of the universe. And here mm -hmm. we are. And uh, yes, playing the part of David, I guess I'm the uh, cheap knockoff David today uh, because I'm neither a businessman nor attractive. So... Now, don't be so hard on yourself. You're right. I will own a business one day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. Um, but yes, I'm actually interested in hearing what the real David's food travesty was. But but we first, we need to hear your answer as the fake David. What is the uh, worst thing David has is, ever made? What is the worst thing that fake David has ever made? Oh, man. I don't really have like a... a bastardized food so much as I just lived off of egg dishes for a solid week because I spent all my money on alcohol like a true college kid and all I had in my fridge was a dozen eggs and a two liter of milk and uh yeah that had to last me a week so I made egg dishes for a full week because uh, it okay but so by a full week do you mean a full like school week, like work week like or do you whole, mean like the full seven days week. yeah Okay, so yeah. you had a dozen eggs, and it had to last you seven days. Yeah. So two of those days, you had a single egg to eat for a full day. Yes. Jesus Christ. <laughs> you okay, and a, man? And a shit ton of beer. I worry about you sometimes. <laughs> Join the list. That is truly <laughs> despicable. And David, what do you have to say for yourself, real David? I don't know what's going on. I know Twitch is down. I got disconnected from the show briefly. I came back. Everyone was dancing. Uh, I didn't get a resolution on the Qui Gon Jinn situation. Was yeah. there, did you need a resolution there? Yeah. Um, I think Qui Gon to was Josh calling me handsome and uh, food travesties. Wow. Yes. Yeah. Yes. What is your food travesty, David? What is what is the worst thing you've ever made? Like. Like in terms of, oh my God, I'm broke as shit and all I have is what's in my fridge. I need to make a meal out of this. What is like the most horrible thing you've done with that? I've never been broke, Josh, so I couldn't really answer that question. Oh, really? Um, <laughs> the biggest cooking mistake I ever made, though, I can talk about that if you'd like. Uh, does that work for our hosts? Uh, ask Nicole, it's her show. Yeah, absolutely. Let's hear it. So one time I was trying to make uh, pierogies. I was trying to make fried pierogies in the oven, on the stove. And I didn't put enough oil in the pan. And so the pan started to dry off. The oil had like evaporated or been absorbed by the pierogies. And so I was like, oh, I need more oil. So I just grabbed some more canola oil and then just poured it in the pan. And here's the thing about like canola oil and cooking is you need to heat the oil up before you put the food on. And so what I ended up was like just a messy, gross, congealed mess of pierogies and oil. Oh, no. <laughs> so it was basically just like I had taken – all uh, the canola oil and just like done a canola oil drizzle on these half <laughs> it was awful yeah the mm -hmm. eastern european in me is just crying right now 
<laughs> my <laughs> heritage. My heritage. Um, I, um, one of my boyfriends that I was living with at some one point. Um, what boyfriends made... do you have, Nicole? <laughs> Currently. Listen, don't get don't, don't get anyone started on that because Emily will come in, turn her camera on, and start educating you on polyamory, and that will we will go three hours over. <laughs> Emily, you want to take your cue? <laughs> um, oh no! How do I how do I even turn my camera on? Oh, here we go. Hey, I'm here now. Hi. The, the mystery guest. <laughs> We have many mystery guests uh, this time. Uh, so you guys have questions about Polly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Three hours. Yeah, session. specifically, our question about Polly is: What is Nicole's deal, and how many boyfriends does she have? And is that a is that like a furnace filter on the on your shelf there? A furnace filter. Nicole, Nicole, what's next oh, to your Nicole. pad there? What the yeah, fuck? That, that does look like a furnace filter. Um, it's not. It's a shiny vase, but. Oh. That's not a bit. That looks like a shiny Magic the Gathering card holder. It does, doesn't it? Okay, you got me. I secretly play Magic the Gathering and I put all my cards away so you guys wouldn't sniff me out on. Yeah, we here. don't like we don't like nerd shit over here. So yeah, what's this my, being an anti nerd show now? I feel like this has always been. I feel like this has always been a, a through line of the show. It's you know it's been implicit when it's not explicit and um, yeah. Yeah, so like it totally it totally makes sense that you usually do the show in David's gaming store. Well, that's just because I'm a leech and he has tech. It's true, Kelly. Why do you have a blanket tacked to your ceiling? Uh, yeah, let's ask questions about everyone's so, background. So basically, if you lay like down, it kind of looks like you're in a forest. If you're like really high, I guess I don't know. I guess that works. Yeah, you can try to simulate the experience right now. But I'm not really high. Well, we can fix that. Oh, please don't. It gives me mad anxiety. <laughs> yeah, Josh, I thought we agreed that you were going to do one of these next shows entirely on mushrooms. I mean, get me the mushrooms and I'll do it. Okay, right. Josh, those are illegal. That was a trap. Yeah. Oh. Josh, yeah, why is that picture hung up? Why is that picture on the ground? What is going on with your no, guys? Uh, <laughs> Jesus Christ. No so, uh, current future or past uh, host or guest of the show endorses the consumption of mushrooms for any reason. Exactly. Last week or two weeks ago was all a bit. Um, well, to answer your question, David, it's because A, I'm lazy, and B, I don't, I don't know how to hang either of these pictures without, um, without nails, and I don't want to lose my damage deposit. So what was the thought process then when you decided to get pictures? You're like, this will look good leaning up against the floor. <laughs> well, well, well. So the, the big one on, on my my right, but your guys' left, uh, the big one is actually still, I've been carrying that for like three houses now because it's actually from Nicole's cousin's husband. What? Chris and... Which pet, so what? Chris gave you that? Yeah. Chris didn't give me shit. Yeah, so Chris loves me more than you. Eat shit. Uh, That's fair. And um, the the picture of myself, well, I've told that story before. Uh, that was a gift. That was a gift. Yeah, and, uh, actually, Josh, I know we we showed it before, but but can you just can you just go grab the picture and bring yeah, it? Yeah, I'll, I'll I'll go grab the picture. It's my favorite thing in your apartment, excluding you. And can we so, talk about while Josh is away? Why, like, Josh has a fucking shelf of DVDs, like it's two thousand and eight. What is going on here? <laughs> I would like to actually really talk about. We were talking earlier about how concerned we are that he hasn't said the words I love you to anyone in five years, but we can talk about that later. Look at that yeah, good looking guy. Go. Yeah, right? that Josh? Where's that Josh? Handsome son of a bitch. I like that torn collar. I like that fucking uh, post apocalyptic chic look there. Can he we went just to, He went to one of those ultra specific caricature artists that just like kind of does in a oh, like so halfway that point. Picture just uh, took a little tumble there. <laughs> yeah. The halfway point between painting your picture and painting Jake Gyllenhaal's picture, and it's like here you go. This is the. Uh, this is you if you'd made some better choices. Also, to answer both your or your question there, uh, again, the ones on the right, that's all PS4 and 360 games. And on the left, that is all Blu-rays that are incredibly expensive because I have expensive taste in movies. And if I'm going to pay stupid amounts of money, I'm going to put them on display. I mean, if you want to call that a display, I guess. 
Well, right now it's being blocked by my lawn <laughs> I <mean>, chair. <laughs> I guess we're talking about somebody who doesn't hang their picture, so I guess that does count as a display in the house of Josh. Well, I mean, my my uh, my way of just blowing all this away is that uh, I'm a single straight male, and I don't have to actually care about my appearances right now. Well, not with that picture, you don't. Know? That fucking exactly. picture on your Tinder profile. Woo! Come and get it, ladies. <laughs> Oh, man. Actually, if you look on the back of that frame and it says, eat shit, you Canadian bastard, because the artist who made it is American. Mm. And he gave me a loving, loving little byline on it. Somebody's just click clacking away over there. Is that you, Kelly? Yeah, we're going to make this an official position of the show while we have Josh's camera highlighted. Come and get it, ladies. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't. I'm, I'm incredibly, incredibly awkward and easily stressed. And For everyone, I think, I think, I think Nicole get it. needs some ladies alongside all of her boyfriends <laughs> that she apparently has. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Yeah, absolutely. You need to balance it out. Well, she's already seducing my friends. Oh yeah. <laughs> I went to one party. No, all the ladies just want to hang out. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, life. What, what was that called again? A Joshika? Joshikai? Joshikai. That's what it was. Joshikai. Girls hang out. Yeah, I was lucky I slipped it under the radar uh, back when Josh only knew white people, but now he only he's only t accepting new friends if they're Japanese. Uh, um, or Korean. I also just want to clarify, it's Qui-Gon Jin, Nicole. It's Qui-Gon oh. Jin that you look for tonight. Thank you. How do you feel about North Koreans, Josh? I mean, they're a little on the short side. Here's a fun little mnemonic device I had to try to I had to develop because I worked with a Korean person. In America, the South is bad, and in Korea, the North is bad. That's how you remember. Oh, South Thanks. Korea. That's very helpful. South Korea. Oh, we've got key. some comments from viewers on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh no! Oh no! Wait, we have a new participant. Wait, quick! Why quick! Do... Producer, play the song. <laughs> Welcome, Mac. Mac, Mac has wisely muted. chose to join with no audio and no video, <laughs> which is the Wait. least incriminating way you can participate in this show. He watched uh, how David was sniping everyone's backgrounds and was like, mm, not today, Satan. Mm -hmm. No, because Mac is smart. Mac has a black screen behind him and doesn't have anything for me to pick apart. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm surprised you went for the DVD piles, the pictures, and not the random lawn chair sitting in the living room that has been there for when no, was that's my house party two weeks ago, Nicole? Three weeks I mean, ago. If, if you want me to start targeting you, Mac, we could talk about how you're wearing a shirt that fucking seems to be designed to blend in with your fucking couch there. Like, I don't know what kind of camel bullshit you're trying to pull here. Nailed it. Thank you. Hmm. All right, I think it's uh, David's turn to have his background picked apart. Yeah, I don't know if we can really work with that. There's not much. Yeah, yeah. why do you have nothing no, in your I background? Think, yeah, why, why is your background so boring? I have a lot of criticisms because across from where David is sitting right now is the beautiful wall of what is supposed to be our show theater slash studio, including the incredibly gorgeous desk I hand designed for him uh, while I was supposed to be doing... No, I did it my lunch break at work. And he wouldn't even put the table on its correct feet. He's kicked it over where it's now laying on its back. It's probably broken. So I don't know if you want to talk about that, David. Hey, Medway Studios. <laughs> what I want and to talk about... the segment. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what I want to talk about with David is why have we never addressed the fact that your initials are DP? <laughs> JP. Nobody uses their middle name. Come on, man. I do. The J is for jiggling. Double jiggling penetration. <laughs> or maybe just job. I don't know. Does that work? Double job it... penetration? Let's workshop this. There's enough of this in this call. We can figure it out. 
Is this just a distraction from how many boyfriends Nicole has? Because she still hasn't answered that question. <laughs> it's a personal question between me and my one boyfriend. I just, I mostly I got self conscious because you started talking about polyamory and I was like, oh God, now I'm the boring one in the call. No, don't, don't worry, Nicole. Don't worry. You've always been the boring one in the call. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. Thanks, Kelly. That does make me feel better. There's nothing wrong with monogamy. Or being boring, trust me. That's a self burn for those Thanks, in man. the audience. <laughs> for those playing along. <laughs> so, if we can work back to what we were supposed to be criticizing Nicole over, um, what's the deal with your pronouncing pronunciation of Vaz? I can't remember how I pronounced it. Did I say Vaz or Vase? You said something very perverted that I will not repeat on this show. Vaz. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Good thing we yeah, why, it then. That's like the one wrong way to pronounce it. <laughs> Nicole, why aren't there any flowers in your vag? <laughs> because it's self-cleaning and it smells fine and it doesn't need any of that bullshit. Take that. Also, why is Paul Patty Pro. just lurking in the comments? Why don't they join us? Uh, Patty what, has the self-respect not what, what, to what, appear what, 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 any longer on this show. Fair. Yeah. That hey, is like your puppy? Yes, that's that's just, not a dog. I've said it before right. and I will say it again. That that is very clearly a gerbil. That won't be necessary. Can you can we get like a live viewing of this puppy? She's uh, currently in solitary confinement right now for being a demon. So, that's oh, no. <laughs> yeah. um, to to go off of this gerbil thing though, how how big is it? We need we need to like we need to compare sizes. Are you like, sure that's accurate? Are you sure you shouldn't just bring her out so that we can see? I can't. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not. I'm not where you can show us the exact the size part. of your dog. I'm not addressing the fact that she's supposed to be not with me right now, so I'm just gonna leave her there. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you that's gotta, you gotta respect. Right Why do you have some some dice peeking out there? Oh, that's from my. Hold on, it's from my other background here. Goodbye, dog. <gasps> All right, so I have I have a question for the panel here. Mm -hmm. And what the fuck is happening on Mac's screen? What is happening? I'm just Did you not read uh, Private Eye Magpie's comment? Mac is like a fucking big time YouTube streamer. Wow, holy shit. Mac have runs you been over Dragon Academy on YouTube. Have you, you been know, advertising on us on uh, you know, like whenever you end a show, like, hey, check out my good, good, cool, nice friends for another budget? I've made a video in like months, so no. Hmm. Okay, so the question for the panel is this. Um, yeah, I need to be in the middle so everyone else is the panel. So here's the string of texts I've received from our guest. Um, this was just before eight. I would be late trying to get my son to sleep. Uh, really sorry. Can we pre-plan? Next week would be good. I apologize. It was already late as hell. Thought it was 8 p.m. So should we... Should we try to just work him into the remainder of the show, or uh, should we reschedule? I'm going I mean, to just leave myself on out of here and let your guest take over. Mm -hmm. Here's the I, part of the show I like, and no offense to Josh, because I do think you're a great GM, Josh. I like the part of the show where we just talk shit and I make fun of everybody. I don't like the part good. of the show where we have to play... That's uh, fair. That's fair. Kelly Quest. No. Yeah, I mean, like, where we have to do nerd shit. Well, yeah, he's not a nerd. He did say that. Show as he, did, he did say he wasn't a nerd, so. Mm -hmm. So this is my question for the panel. What is your favorite way to just bully the nerds? Go. Uh, well, usually I go with a long, extended description of the nerd. Like, as Nicole knows, I come there, I go, Welcome, you dirty, stinky, filthy... Nerd. <laughs> it, you, it, it's, it only works if you're like, I feel like that only works if it's like kind of true. Like if the person's like maybe like had some bo issues in the past that they're working on. Now you, so I feel you like you need to. You need to make, I like to make my insults really targeted. Yeah, you gotta go like, after the insecurities. I get it. Yeah, for sure. Like, hey, Josh, uh, it's been a long time. I see you haven't been out in a little while because your shirt's from the '60s. <clears throat> or. Oh. Ah, that was subpar. I, I take that one back. Damn it! You can, you can take a mulligan on that one. Let's let's go. <laughs> you can get another one. Um, 
Okay. Why are you muted, David, by the way? Because I was uh, trying not to be disruptive. But real talk, Kelly, I know you're doing a bit here, but uh, one of my absolute favorite things to do when somebody's walking by and carrying something is just knock that shit out of their hands. <laughs> <laughs> I had a... I had a, I worked with a German intern and he was like, I don't know, 22, 23. And like where I worked, I was out in the field most of the time and he was in the office. And like literally the first day I met him, I was like, oh, how's it going? I'm David. And we chatted for a few minutes. And then I was like sitting at my desk and he was walking by with a bunch of papers and I just fucking whacked it out of his hand. I pointed at the ground. I said, all right, now pick that up. Oh, and I don't know if so about Germans, but like he was not prepared for that. <laughs> and then oh, he that's did. amazing. Like, like oh. a straight out of like a jock from like a high school movie. That's straight up. <laughs> <laughs> Legitimately my favorite thing to do. We went, uh, we were helping a friend move and then we went to the food court afterwards at Bonnie Doom Mall to eat. And Bonnie Doom Mall, the garbage cans have like little levers so you can pull it to open it up. And I dumped my food in and my friend came up behind me and he went to dump his food in. And just as he went to put it in, I slammed the door shut. <laughs> and shit went all over the floor. Wow. <laughs> and then I loudly said, Ian, why did you throw your garbage all over the floor? And then everything oh my turned God. Up <laughs> You're a piece of shit. I love it. <laughs> That's right. Come on down every week to Pemetaway Games where it's an inclusive environment and everyone is made to feel good. Yeah, David, I really appreciate that you've committed to bullying nerds by like setting up a board game shop so you can lure them in with all that like board, board, board game bait. Just wait then as they... soon as they go to buy something, I just knock it out of their hands. So get out of here, fucker. <laughs> wait, Come wait and get them. it. <laughs> Wait till oh. they pay for it, and as soon as it's their possession at that point, <laughs> you just knock it out of their hands. Like they've just bought a Catan set, and you're like, "All right, thank That's you." That's a bad game. It's a match. Yes, it is. Nicole and I had an extended Let's conversation about this. About this. Ooh, hey, yeah. No. I, I, I just, calling it a bad I, I really I need to interject with a very important point about how all of the haters on this call earlier who said David can't commit to things like producing a live show, look at that. He can commit to bullying the nerds. So yeah. I'm here to defend you, David. Go on. I commit to a lot of things. Uh, also, I will commit. Commit. <laughs> and as you can I, see, I, Kelly's way of bullying people is to actually like pick out things that like it's about their personality <laughs> um, and like just, little things that they're very obviously like self conscious about. And I'm not self conscious. About it. The thing that Kelly's not telling you is that it's that I don't commit to Kelly's fucking half assery in his show. Like, just pick a lane, Kelly, online or in person. You can't have it both ways, baby. I Take blame Josh, who was the first person to bail on in person this week because he believes in being safe and because doesn't I was, hate everyone around him. I was in fucking Valview, which is a super hot zone right now. Oh no. Yeah, it's like you're like, oh yeah, these Edmonton numbers and these Calgary numbers are very concerning. And then you look if at this the show. And you're if like, this show was only online, Kelly, I'd be here every fucking day. Well, COVID willing, that's exactly what's going to happen. So, But let's go and back to talking about bullied. Josh's hot zones. <laughs> Wait, no, I didn't get to tell you about how I bully nerds yet. Yes, please yeah. tell us how you bully nerds. Okay. No, the best way to bully nerds is to beat them at their own game. And that's why I'm a huge nerd, is so I can beat up all the other nerds. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I just play D&D so I can kill everyone else's characters. Hell yeah. yeah. That was going to be mine, too. I agree with that. I thought nice. the best way to bully nerds was to beat them at their faces and their stomachs mm. with your fists. No. Hit, hit them where it That's a good way to get arrested. There's That's a great way to get arrested. Let's all go through, uh, let's go through the panel and everyone name your favorite way to get arrested. Uh, well, I've actually Starting with Josh. Well, I've actually been arrested, so let's, let's start with me, I guess. Uh, in high school, I punched a kid out for shooting my brother with an uh, airsoft gun. Pretty noble. Uh, this is getting really tough, Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's Josh, there's Josh doxing himself again. He's out of cousins to throw under the bus, so he's like, "Well, look, what crimes have I committed in my lifetime?" I mean, my my crimes are very minor compared to my family's crimes. <laughs> and your family's crimes are very minor compared to the crimes committed by the leadership in North Korea. Damn right. It's all relative. So, yeah, we, it's all perspective. We, we do not stand Kim Jong. Fifty dollars. Who, who the fuck is? Are we on at this point? I'm actually. It's not Kim Jong Un anymore. And that three hundred fifty is in the. Is Kim Jong Un? Yeah. 
Because yeah. it was yeah, Kim Il Sung. I thought Kim Jong Un was the second one. What's his For those of you just joining us, we are thirty minutes into our uh, live discovery of Josh going on Wikipedia and figuring out who the leader of North Korea is. It is Un. Who He's the almost there, dad, folks. Could... Kim Jong Il. Il. Hey, that's what it was. You have your question about your eight o'clock guest there, Kelly, or what? Come again? Uh, I will later. Did you ever resolve your question about your eight o'clock guest? Uh, I mean, I don't know. He's he's got kids. I don't know. I, I say haven't we, looked at my phone. We can throw Kelly Quest out the window. We just do ninety minutes of this and then call it a day. I yeah. I don't know. I mean, keep making up this show that doesn't exist. But go on. Uh, but uh, Kelly, Kelly, Kelly. Real talk. I can do next week if we just bullshit on this one and your guest or we want to do like beer tasting and tabletop next week in you person. Oh, yeah. I mean, why not both? I feel like you prepared a story. We have like 60 NPCs who can now play. Because I don't have planned for that many NPCs. Well, I well, like um, that this show is now um, how plan the planning of the show is now the show. Absolutely. So meta. All right. No, Sessions you know what? We're going to stop show. being meta. And here's what we're going to do. If, with your permission, Nicole, it is your show. Mm-hmm. All right, so here's here's the question I had written down um, for our for our time filling bit. So you're all familiar with the phrase, "If you're the smartest person here in your room, you're in the wrong room." Okay. So what if you're is, alone in the room? Okay, that's a great question. <laughs> Discuss. Um, well. At that point, we could go with the argument that um, any subject that you think you're an expert on, you're probably not an expert on, unless you've like gotten like full schooling on that bit. I mean, there's that whole idea that um, the the more versed you think you are in a subject, the less versed you probably are in it. Like there's that whole peak, that bell curve kind of thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Where, yeah, where the, the more the more the more you know the le the more you realize the, that you don't know anything. The old Dunning Kruger. Yeah, sure. I think Dun Dunning Kruger is the other way, isn't it? It's the less you know, the more you think you know. I guess it's I guess that the reverse is true. I don't know if that's if it's still called the yeah. Dunning Kruger effect. Does anyone have a thing on that? I don't know. I also, My question is yes. if you're actually the smartest person in the room, is that true? You're in the wrong room. So maybe what we need to determine first is who is the smartest person in this StreamYard call right now? Well, I'm opting out of that immediately. It's definitely Josh, right? Please no. Yeah, I mean, he did opt out, about, uh, opt out of the vote, which seems like the smart thing to do. My earnest answer is I think Mac is the smartest person in this room because he has spent the least amount of time so far appearing on this show. Mac, so Mac, yeah, do you feel like you're in the wrong room right now? I think I'm right where I need to be right at this very moment. Okay, so that uh, that that technically rules them out as a result of it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, so who feels the most like they're in the wrong room? I mean, I'm cozy, but I'm four beer deep, so... <laughs> God damn, I gotta catch up. <laughs> okay, because where I was going with this was, if this is true, is this maybe just true of every adjective? Like... <laughs> If you're the nicest person in the room, you're in the wrong room. Is that true? No, because, like, if you're the nicest person in the room, then, like, a lot that of room you fucking can... needs it. Exactly. Like, at that point, you probably need nice people. Mm -hmm. How about if you're the meanest person in the room, you're in the wrong room? Hmm. I don't know. Depends how much you feel about negative energy. What if you're the whitest person in the room? I win. That's every room I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. We got to ask, who's the most Western European of descent in this room? Well, really oh, are we... great question. <laughs> mm. Are we, we turn this into, into like... a how white are you contest? Because mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, feel why, like why that, could go, that could go really downhill really fast. <laughs> This is also I'm yeah. Go get out like, my Aryan phrenology textbook. This is getting dangerously <laughs> close to me pulling out like here? my like time my like family tree and being like, actually, if you go back eight generations on this side. Yeah, 
my parents or my family was all peasants in the background, so we don't actually have lineage lines. But it's like Ooh. this asshole showed up in the country one day, and that's that's our written record. Mm. My, well, I mean, uh, I have blue eyes and I used to have blonde hair. Does that make me the whitest person in the room? By you know, at least by Nazi standards. And if we don't believe in Nazi standards, what standards do we even believe in? Mm, he's got a point. There's your episode title. <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> no <Jesus> kidding. <laughs> hey, hey, based on YouTube's algorithms, that might actually get us more views. Mm. Oh boy. I mean, we can. Wow, leave I into hate this. that. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you can hate that because it's absolutely true. Yikes! <laughs> right, so, to the bottom. <laughs> yeah. Let's let's try a different let's try a different tack. If you're the horniest person in the room, you're in the wrong room. That's uh, funny. Yeah, I was just I, gonna say the wettest, but I guess I, same I, diff. I mean, that's just that's an assault case waiting to happen at that point. I mean, maybe if you don't have self control, but are you telling yeah, I was yourself say, that's some real boys will be boys? Yeah, yeah. You speak for yourself. Uh, that. That's some problematic shit. Did we talk about that? Well, first Where'd of you all, get that? We're yeah, we'll just that leave people. the yikes banner up. It stays. <laughs> first of all, that's for the implication that I agree with that, which no, you don't agree with what you just said. <laughs> I mean, I'm contradictory. <laughs> He's a loose cannon. He's just playing devil's advocate here. Oh, God, please do not put that on me. <laughs> I'm just I'm just asking questions right now. Uh, Private Eye Magpie, why do you think people didn't get horny anymore? Yeah, have you seen the internet? Mm -hmm. I believe... We're all waiting with bated breath for, I mean, for Patty's response. I mean, Rule 34 has been a thing for a very long time now. Which is, for those who don't know, if something exists, there is porn of it. Oh, we know. Ooh. We know about Garfield. Oh, yeah. God. Please don't. <laughs> Please don't put that in my head again. <laughs> that, was I... nice that was a nice callback, man. Thank you. So we started putting up art in our new place, and Ryan has some, like, pretty cool, like, uh, video game art that he picked up at Comic-Cons and stuff. Sorry, right. Can I just interject real quick, Nicole? Yep. When you say putting up art, do you mean just casually leaning it up against the wall on the floor? Fuck off! That's what does. <laughs> okay, so I do want to, like, say that's not how it's going to stay, but that is how it is right now. Because we've arranged it in the area it's going to go in. But yes. So yeah, I guess. That's what I mean. Um, but my yeah, my friend was, like, point looking at it. And we have some Samus art. It's not porn. It's just like Samus in her full it's, it's, like. It's suit. very nice Samus art, actually. <laughs> yeah. And so I had to. I was like showing my friend. He's like not super into video games, and I was like, "Oh yeah, this is Samus. She's like a character from Metroid." And apparently, like I didn't play the Metroid games when I was younger. I played them when I was older. But apparently, it was like a big reveal when like it, it, the when in the one uh, the game where one. it was like the first one. She's yeah. the first one. Okay, yeah. At the end of the game, she like comes out of her suit, right? And she's a woman. And I was like, yeah, it's kind of cool. And then, like, um, and she's like, oh, I played her, like, as her on Smash. And I didn't know that she was she was a woman either. So that's kind of cool. And I was like, yeah, but then it got real fucking weird. And you can't Google Samus without some porn coming up. And she's like, she was just so devastated. She's like, oh, that hurts my yeah. heart. Yeah, I got some bad news. <laughs> yeah. Nicole, you say there's nothing pornographic about it, but I'm pretty sure that the phrase played her on Smash is definitely some kind of innuendo somewhere in some culture. <laughs> yeah. I mean, in some also, culture, you mean bro culture? Also, you can play Zero Suit Samus in Smash now, so you can see her in that. Nerd! Please. <laughs> <laughs> Please. I'm not a Smash player. I shower. Sorry, David, I forget. What was your favorite way to bully nerds? <laughs> See, again, my favorite way to bully nerds was to beat them at games so this is why i was a part of a super smash bros club at some point nice i never uh, got good though so See, we had uh we had jason in the house who was just good at it and as a result um i don't know if i'm any good because he would just beat me every time mm. no matter how good i got he'd be like well jason's gonna win so can I make yeah. a game of it? That's fair. Excuse me. Okay, so another porn-related question. <laughs> so I know. That, <laughs> so I know, especially Kelly. Keep them coming. I know that I. Yeah. I know that you're like really, really conscious of like your waste and the things that you like throw away and how proper recycling techniques and like how to like make the most of things before they get thrown out. 
What do you do if you have old DVD porn? You can't donate it. They're just going to throw it out. How do you ensure that it like lives its fullest potential? Because like definitely. I'd like to go a step further than that. Never mind uh, DVD porn. What about VHS porn? Damn. I mean, oh man, you, I mean, I have one VHS tape total, and I don't own a VHS player, so that's that's a real hard question there. So it I'll could be think, porn, and you would never know. Uh, no, because I know what the movie is, Nicole. Uh-huh. Also, you know what the movie is. I also own it on Blu-ray. So, <laughs> um, but for the DVD one, I'd say just drop it off at a middle school. <laughs> no, you have to. So are we going back to best ways to get arrested? You have to pay them on for four and you have to take it deep into the woods and leave it for other children to find. Ah, uh, uh, perfect. So yeah, I brought this up at work because I was like, "So guys, like, what do I do with this DVD porn? Like, I, I don't want to donate it. I don't want like to like put it on because I have, like I'm like on a buy nothing group on Facebook, and I was like, I don't want to put it on there because I don't want my new neighbors to judge me for it and for the type of porn that I've like own." Um, and then I was like, they were like, oh yeah, well, if you know, you can always throw it in the garbage and then like, just like, if you're worried that like some kid's going to find it, you can like scratch the CD. And I was like, I didn't even think about kids finding it. I was just worried about the waste that I was going to be causing. <laughs> <laughs> is this a real story, Nicole, or is this a bit? No, this is real. This is a true thing. This is a I've real never, problem that I have. Also, never... Nicole has crates of DVD porn. <laughs> also, like... And... I mean, before I go further, I feel like Mac is the only person that has not had a chance to interrupt me before I answer the question that Nicole asked me. So, Mac, go ahead. I'm overly polite, so I don't like to interrupt people. I'm not, and I do. (laughs) That's fair. So, my answer to your question, Nicole, is, first off, I told you that I was conscious of my waist. I told you that in confidence, okay? Like, I'm very Mm -hmm. sensitive about my pants size. That's what I thought you were asking, Nicole. Yeah, that was my question. I'm gonna a beer. Oh, oh cool. Thanks, Sally. <laughs> Great answer. That was definitely a walk away <laughs> joke. That was a walk away. <laughs> what, what is <laughs> the what is the size anyway? Kelly's waist? I would say probably like a 30, 32. That's it. Uh, I mean, oh, yeah, he's a tiny little. Than me. That's well, my size. Well, he's, he's a tiny little, little man. Oh, he looks skinnier than me, and I'm a 34, so... Yeah, yeah okay. Depends on the day. 32 at the most, if not 30. Kelly, waist size? Go ahead. I'm so dumpy I'm feeling size. that day. Uh, I'll tell you my weight size after these messages. Waist size. Yeah, Sorry. waist size is what I said. You said weight size, you dummy. Yeah, well, you my weight size is, uh, you know, bigger than yours, because I'm fucking ripped over here. You probably couldn't lift my weight size. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I will return with my waist size after these messages. Hey, are you thirsty? Check out official sponsor of the show, AGD. That's right, <laughs> AGD. For when for when Bent Stick is too busy to return your calls. <laughs> uh, David, did you, as our official celebrity spokesperson, have you ever received a call from Bent Stick in the past week? No, I haven't. Although, I don't know. I Usually my phone ringer is off, so I, who knows? I'll tell you what I did do, though, Kelly. I was on. Uh, I was doing our Twitch show today, and I got a call. And I, whenever we get a call during the Twitch show, I answer it on the air. And it was a job I interviewed for last week, just letting me know that I was still in contested for the job. <laughs> so the whole <laughs> Twitch stream got to hear about that fun call. Oh, so God, so can, I, can I run Pimet away when you quit for this new job? Uh, I'm not quitting, Kelly. Hmm. You don't think I can work two jobs? Come on. I, you know really what? I've always said that you're not busy enough and you devote too much time to the projects you're already connected to. So <laughs> it's exactly. time that you, uh, yeah, did more. Kelly, are you familiar with the Langoliers? Um, is that is that like a weird, like, uh, new age, like, folk band? You'll get there, Kelly. Just keep happening. You'll get there. <laughs> <laughs> love watching Kelly struggle to put together a joke. <laughs> wait, hold on. Hold on. Let me take another run at that. Hold um, on. You want to back up? Wait, 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 wait. Hey, Kelly, are wait. you familiar with the Langoliers? Yeah, you mean the latest model of Jeep? That's Jeep Langolier. It sounds like a I'd thing. Buy that. Yeah, I, mean, I can get I don't that. Know. Yeah, all right. Like, I'll give you a nod for that. I won't give you a laugh, but I'll give you a smile and a nod. The Langolier, is that a member of King Arthur's other round table? That doesn't even make sense. I'm I, I'm just spitballing. We're we're gonna when I edit it, I'm gonna cut out all except the best joke. Well don't do that. 
We like to see your confused face. We all know that Kelly doesn't edit. I don't know. No, no, I've spent zero edit. minutes editing this show. There was some good editing on the um the bidet video. Yeah, you know what? Let's go back and talk about that. Mac, tell me about what this bidet video is and why you think it's good. Well, wasn't it the one that you had on your channel? I remember checking it out. Oh, there. me? No, no, no. I'm pretty I sure, yeah. Oh, I'm no one. I don't make it. Was, there was rhyming. Uh, there was some decent editing. I'm a bidet aficionado myself, so I could appreciate that. Oh, mm. now let's talk about this. I can't believe we spent time talking about Polly. We could be talking about bidets. Right? Yeah, so our guest this week game. is Mac, bidet aficionado. And yes, Mac, give me your top five favorite things about bidets. Uh, number one, your butthole is clean. That's it. Mm -hmm. That's, that's mm -hmm. a good number one. Oh, that's a great number one. <laughs> Sorry, number two. Should have said. <laughs> no, it's a great number one after you have a number two, Mac. Come on. Exactly. Do the math. You know what? For certain we people of certain physiologies, the we bidet is also great that. after number one. So we I don't want I don't want those people to be forgotten. In fact, I might just go use my bidet for fun right now if you guys could kind of just hold the show down. I mean, it's not a cold show. Motherfuckers got bidets? Bidets, bidets. 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 <laughs> Hell yeah. Thank you for everything. <laughs> Josh, do you not have a bidet? That's the question. Please, I have an apartment. Hey, look at that hamster. Oh, that's a cute You have an apartment, which means you can't have a bidet. Not if they don't install it. You, I want to keep my fucking damage deposit, Kelly. Why are you yeah, so uh, this damage deposit, Josh? What, like, how, what, how long do you have on your lease? And like, what, is, what have landlords done to you in the past that you're so scared to fucking hang a picture? Josh uh, lives in a special apartment with a special damage deposit, which has a specific inclusion towards nail holes in the wall, which I'm pretty sure are like legally wear and tear, but that's fine. Yeah. And he's also his damage deposit specifically says you cannot unscrew the valve beside your toilet and mount on like a plastic Home Depot bidet. Okay, Not so allowed. They'll know. They'll fingerprint that shit. It, it's time for a bad landlord story where you can you can hear my trauma in mm -hmm. real time. Can so I ask a question before you get into that story, Josh? Absolutely. Can I ask two questions? Yes. How old are you? I'm 30 now. All right. Then I, I withhold my second question. There you go. It was um, going to be why haven't you bought a house, but the first question answers the second question. Thank you. Um... <laughs> So when I first moved into my first apartment instead of a house, uh, fuck boardwalk, first of all. We're going to open with that yep. one. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I and my current roommate in the middle of winter, our thermostat broke, and we were no longer getting proper heating. And so we phoned the, um, business, uh, the building manager, and we're like, hey, our, uh, our thermostat isn't working anymore it's broken and she said no it's not to which we looked at each other confused for a second and said yes it is broken because we're not getting heat right now and then she went well you know if you want someone to come take a look at it it's going to cost you money and we're like what do you fucking mean it's going to cost us money mm -hmm. uh, so uh yeah we just didn't have good heat for the entire winter oh god and yeah, so that was super fun. You can ask Braun about that. He was super happy about it as well. Yeah, I bet. I also feel like that's like a, yeah, that's a we probably were, a violation of your lease agreement, which I know you guys were young. You guys were like, you yeah, know. Yeah, we were like, like 21 at that point, mm -hmm. 2021, some sort of that area. So, yeah, uh, I have a related boardwalk story. Good. Let, let's hear, let's shit on boardwalk today. <laughs> Fuck boardwalk. Yeah. <laughs> No, I, for some reason, like, our heat got stuck on, like, max during the spring. So it's, like, ridiculously hot in our apartment. And I had to, like, put in a work order, like, three or four times before they actually did something. They would just, like, leave us notes. And I'm like, okay, you didn't fix it. You just left me a note being like, yup. Uh, and yeah, my poor roommate's cat was, like, hiding in the bathroom behind the toilet because it was the cool. <laughs> place you could find yeah. the poor freaking cat yeah. I, and I my roommates both it. had allergies so they would want me to open the windows and i'm like this is ridiculous um so that was unfun and then eventually they're like oh yeah we need to like call like an electrician and they'll be in in a couple days and i'm like you needed to deal with this like a week ago but thanks um oh, neat 
There is also a really fun puddle I had to jump over in order to get down the stairs to my car in the garage because just the building leaked. And it was like a 24-story building, and sometimes both of the elevators would break. Um, So good luck, accessibility. So the moral of the story is that Boardwalk is actually the worst property management company, and if you ever see their signs on an apartment you plan on renting... Either like buyer beware or just say fuck that shit. Yeah, I had another friend who they had like a mouse infestation and there was just like mouse poop <laughs> under her kid's crib and she like oh. had to pay money to be able to move out and they would like not do anything. It was very bad. Yeah, no, Kelly, actually, the fucking worst. I just want to give props to Kelly. That was a pretty funny joke, Kelly. That, yeah, that is pretty fucking good. <laughs> Considering he's not even in screen right now and he still cracked that joke. Yeah, considering that we can hear him streaming the show in the background. Hi, <laughs> it, <laughs> oh, there he is. Look at that. Yeah. Oh, turn it down. His, his bit rate is his bit rate is so bad. Got to get those got to get those watcher those viewer numbers up as any way you can. <laughs> but yeah, um so yeah, that that's the reason I'm super paranoid about losing damage spots now because when they came in and did the inspection um they like they dinged us for not having dusted our blinds has oh, anyone ever talked about yeah, that's not legal. Like... oh believe me i if i would have been the same age i am now i would have fucking ragged so hard but i was 21 and stupid so hey everybody shut up i got a funny kelly slam <laughs> oh yeah nail it has anyone ever talked about how kelly looks like caillou all grown up <laughs> that is hey. a good slam. That the is only difference slam. is he's ten times as, as annoying. I mean, that's pretty impressive. <laughs> I was actually, I was, I was sitting here trying to think of a, a good nerd slam for Kelly when we were going over how do you like to bully nerds, and I was going, I was going to say um, Charlie Brown, but Caillou is also very good. Yeah. Cool. Can I tell you a mouse story? Uh huh. We have a mouse in our shop. Uh huh. And the landlord came in. Speaking of good landlords, our landlord's awesome. I honestly keep waiting for the other shoe to drop because our landlord's too good. Uh, <laughs> I'm really yeah. concerned that, like, at some point something's going to happen and they're going to really reveal the bills to be shitty because they're really nice. Yeah, uh, I had great landlords. We brought mouse traps. They brought mouse traps in. And then, like, within 15 minutes, we heard a big fucking snap. Hell yeah. So, if you're looking for a dead mouse, I got you covered. Perfect. Thanks. I do uh, love snapping I- next. For the record, my good, my current landlords have been like super easy to deal with. Like the building manager has been nothing but like, as long helpful. as you don't hang a picture. Well, no, no, this is my own paranoia. Like, like I'm just so paranoid. You know that 3M makes like uh, Velcro adhesive that you can use. I've actually like that's where the lazy part comes in. I plan on getting some of those and hanging pictures with them at some point. I'm just. I don't trust yeah, those don't anymore. Feel... I've had too many of them fall off my wall and smash things. I don't feel good about it, uh, Patty, but. Can't have mice in the shop. I mean, that's the nature of things. Uh, one time at my welding shop, welding shop was, with David Plamondon. Uh, <laughs> I believe it's pronounced Plamondon. Um, <laughs> Monsieur Plamondon, il aime la cigarette. Uh, welding shops always have mice in them because they're open fucking garbage setups all the time. And I was sitting in my lunchroom and I saw a mouse crawl up the garbage can so i had to go like put down whatever i was eating at the time i had to go catch this mouse and i put it outside because i'm a dirty hippie but then <laughs> i i feel like i might have done more harm than good because the mouse uh which was a, a female i i sexed it um <laughs> what <laughs> you said what to the mouse <laughs> i sexed it but sexed it <laughs> um, and then it kept trying to run into the shop again, so I feel like maybe I, it had a, a nest in there, and I might have uh, killed all its children as a result oh. of it. Yeah, my work Which, also ha- always has mice in it for some reason. Kind of weird. Well, I was going to say, my dad would have considered that two like birds, one stone, but I'm not mm. my father. Two birds stoned at once, am I right? <laughs> 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 what? <laughs> um, yeah. And with that, that's all, that's all I that joke, Nicole. <laughs> Thank you. I can think of no better time than to pivot to our uh, role playing session. Are, Are we still doing uh, that? Real I slice, can... everyone. Thanks for having don't me. We... <laughs> no, David. Don't, don't we do leave. this every week? David, you're 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 the guest. You're playing the guest character. No, 
I, oh, I was going to say, I can think of no better time than to pivot to our role-playing game than next week. Yeah. Um, at about I mean, 8 I, o'clock. I'm, oh, totally down. I'm down to do it. Don't get me wrong. I just no. I don't have character prompts for everyone involved here. No, I, I was going to say you just you just make it David the character prompt and uh or we could uh, we could try to work our guest in. Hang on one sec. He's on the phone. <laughs> hey Mitch, how's it going? Put him on speaker, you goober. <laughs> <laughs> I love What's watching that? people have conversations, but yeah, I Yeah, put him on speaker like a fucking adult. <laughs> <laughs> Did you uh, thought about anything happen. from what uh, I talked about earlier? A... We're, uh, yeah, we kind of just can't uh, hear him when we're all uh, talking over it, can you? It's too much. Yeah. You're not smart enough to take headphones on. Fucking idiot. So, uh, yeah, um, we just kind of started a chaos version of our show, <laughs> and uh, we got about six people in the chat. So, we found things to talk about. Very, uh, very inspiring, <laughs> important, uh, yeah. intelligent. Ask him what he does with his DVD porn. Talk about, you know. <laughs> we'll ask him yeah. when he joins the call. I can't believe we didn't well, get we deeper into the So we were debating whether we were going yeah, really um, to pivot get to pulling our game. On that. What kind of porn is it, and why are you getting rid of it? Those are my two biggest questions. Because <laughs> I don't have a DVD player. What is it? Fucking 1998? When did DVDs come out? I don't remember. <laughs> um, definitely, I... definitely after 1998. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I don't know. I, like, I, I don't even know why I had it in the first place. I, like, I think I, like, got it for free because I bought a bunch of stuff. Um, and then I found another you just one. just a bunch of porn? I went to the porn <laughs> store, bought a bunch of porn, and blah, blah, blah. I got blah, blah, blah. Next thing free. I knew, I had a bunch of porn. You know, for the big poly orgy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You got the big screens. You got one playing on each wall. No, I, uh, yeah. It just, you, you, I feel like... DVD porn just like falls into your lap. Ryan has a couple for they were like joke gag gifts from friends. He also has some like <laughs> is that what he told you? <laughs> yeah. Did he tell you he doesn't even watch it? <laughs> Literal <laughs> gag gifts. No, no. Nice. I'm sure, uh, I'm sure I, you I, it, but... I once got a a, a mm. dick soap from my bosses who were vending at the taboo show. And then my my now current boyfriend thought it'd be funny to come out of the bathroom deep throating the soap dick. Um, <laughs> but yeah, what no. actually happened was we just heard choking from the bathroom <laughs> because well, yeah, he got yeah, soap in soap. his mouth. Yeah, it's soap. But but yeah, it's like a soap dick against hands up, and so like to get the soap on your hand, you have to like stroke the dick. Yeah. Incredible. Mm -hmm. And this is a gift I got from my bosses. It was very professional. When you mm -hmm. when you initially said, I thought you said they were bending at the taboo show, and I was like, No, they're gonna, like bending. contortionists or like, <laughs> like yeah, gotcha. Uh, what was what where what business do they run? Uh, Pixie Glassworks. Oh, okay. Uh, so glass. Does that mean anything? Does that mean anything to you, Nicole? <laughs> Sorry, is it Glassworks or Glassworks? Is it like glasses and glass, like? Glass okay, so they. Yeah. Oh, okay. I, I love when people ask me questions because my life is weird. like they cared about the answer. <laughs> uh, um, so I've decided to change the prompt for the for the guests when they do appear here. By the way, okay, um, I, it, it's still going to work within the story, but now I'm just going to make it very uncomfortable for them the whole time. Are we still doing so the story? He, here's what I think we should do. Here's my pitch, and then again, the call to your show, so you can decide. Mm -hmm. My pitch is that since we have one very active member of the chat right now, our number one fan, that person should decide if we continue talking about fucking nonsense for another hour, or if we pivot to the role-playing game and that audience member will also decide which of our extra participants between David, Mag, and Emily will be playing the role of that character. Ding. No pressure, Pat. Well, I mean, first, the first Nicole, you think that's copyright, Nicole? Hmm? Oh. So don't do it, it's copyright. Is it copyright if you just hum it? It can be, yes. because welcome to Twitch copyright bullshit. What if I do it slightly off key? Me. Oh. Yeah, yeah, he's just chosen himself to play the character. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> that I, that I'm 100% here for. I'm just, like, this is the part. This, this is what I love, Matt, Kelly. I just love coming in and talking shit with Nicole, and tolerating your presence. Jesus, I don't Christ know. Well, you God guys can man. have a spinoff. You can have something depraved like a podcast. Oh, and Kelly, trust me. I've pitched this to Nicole six or seven times already. Yeah, mm. I told him that when you eventually inevitably ditch me for a younger and hotter host, 
um, that I will consider doing a spinoff. Uh, fountain pens have a lot of ink. I'm trying to make my pen out of ink so I can put it away. Jesus Why? Christ. What does that mean? What are you talking about? Fountain yes, pens, you... not ballpoints. Yeah, right. Josh lives in the 1900s. He's trying to make the pen run out of ink 1800s? so he can put it away? Yes. My fountain pen? Yes, please. So I don't leak ink in the Emily, cap. speaking of younger and hotter host candidates, how old are you? <laughs> I'm 28. Second Kelly, have you younger. talked to Emily? <laughs> I try to avoid it whenever I can, honestly. Nicole, is this like <laughs> the ring? You're not allowed to fucking leave the show? Are you like Atlas? You have to get somebody else to fucking hold Kelly yeah. up? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I like that you added the holding Kelly part up to, to that one. I like that. Thank you. Absolutely. I'm pretty. I'm I like pretty to think off. of myself as like a Sisyphus, constantly pushing a ball up a hill. Where I made a Sisyphus reference Nicole, on Facebook. Nicole is sort of a bizarro Atlas, where where she's like, "Yeah, I'm holding the ball up, but I'm rolling it up the hill." So Nicole is actually just dead weight on the ball, being like, "Look how much I'm helping." <laughs> and I'm like, "No, you got to let go of the ball and push it." Right. And uh, I speaking I think speaking the of Sisyphus. Of Speaking of Sisyphus, everyone needs to play Hades. Thank you. Goodbye. Hades is I... like... My partner's playing Hades in the other room right now. Hades it's so is good. like the gayest roguelike I've ever played, and I've played so uh, many roguelikes. It's so good. What it makes is... it gay? That it's literally gay. Yeah. The, the Mostly the homosexual relationships, I think. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so not yeah. gay box gay, but actual gay gay. Like, like oh, legitimately, yeah. it's the gayest. It's, like, it's, it's, I've played it's a bunch of it, but I haven't seen anything gay happen yet. Oh, well, get to play more. Also, is it gayer than Boyfriend Dungeon? Uh, Sorry, what's Boyfriend Dungeon? A Boyfriend Hello. Dungeon is a dungeon crawler where you... Uh, if I'm remembering I haven't played it yet. Uh, yet. Yet. <laughs> I, mean, I play weird games as sort of a hobby, so... Uh, a dungeon crawler where you use... Um, I think Hop Men as like your like Pokemon dungeon like character, basically. Um, yes, yes. I am glad that someone else agrees that Haiti is gay as fuck. I mean, I'm not, a, I'm not against it being gay. I just, yeah, I'm just, you haven't but seen this is yet? also, this might be like Game of Thrones with, uh, Loras Tyrell, The Night of Flowers. I was, I was, uh, completely shocked to find out that Loras Tyrell is gay. Yeah, uh, to be fair, I feel like once you actually get, like, cause you gotta talk to, like, all the side characters and shit like that, it starts getting very flirtatious amongst... Oh, I mean, it's Greek. It's Greek mythology. It, there, everyone's fucking everyone, basically. Yeah, I wouldn't say it's especially like, if you're so much as like maybe yeah, word. Yeah. Pansexual. All them, all them cows. Yeah, it was a yeah, not so much yeah. gay. Like probably like more pansexual. Yeah, I guess more like, sexual. I'm I'm used yeah. to I'm I'm used to like a lot of my even my bi friends calling like everything that's just gay. Like gay is like not just. Like men homosexuality, but just gay is just the general like blanket term at that point. Oh, it's in like I yeah, I, hang out with I know what you're talking about. Just yeah, like yeah, an yeah. umbrella term for LGBTQ. Basically, so, like, if, there, if there's a lot of queer stuff in there, it's it's like gay, so to speak. So I just use it as a blanket term when I probably shouldn't, to be honest. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Doesn't mm -hmm. mean it's a you know as long as you're using it as a blanket term. I feel like it's better using it for a blanket term, and that's situation than you know using it for a blank term is anything that you like disagree a pejorative with. yeah i mean I, I guess i should like direct this question to a new one here that's not not straight as, so as straight the, as i two, am yeah the two straight people talking this yeah <laughs> let's, let's just debate what we think the proper like colloquialisms are for like, <laughs> I mean, yeah. uh, oh boy <clears throat> david you've been selected by the chat i haven't had supper Mm. That's okay. It's only gonna be fifty-five minutes. That's a long time, Kelly. I still got. I know, but when you that. when you're in the character in the zone, listen. Patty decided we can't say no to Patty. We love Patty. This is the second time Patty's thrown me under the fucking bus. Well, that's or... between you and Patty. So uh, yeah, um, Josh, do you want to intro the uh, what's happened in the game so it's far? It's gonna be fifty-five minutes, or is it gonna be twenty minutes? Because we started late and it's already almost. It's time. a two-hour show, Nicole. All right. Well, anyways. but it's Nicole's show, so I think she gets to decide. Mm. It's only and Nicole's also, show when it's expedient and convenient for Kelly. <laughs> I mean, when we it's can actually do, convenient for Nicole. It's no longer a show. We can do twenty-five minutes of role playing, but everyone yells at me that 
doing less than three hours of role playing is sacrilegious. So I figured that uh, twenty five would be bad. Twenty twenty five is fine because I planned for when you talked about the the other guest having to do his character sheet live. I kind of planned for a shorter finale anyways, so this actually works out perfectly. Well, we still have to do David's character sheet live. Well, it's quite easy because, uh, David, your prompt is you are a DVD porn salesman. A what kind of porn salesman? A deity porn salesman? DVD That's right. porn. You literally only sell DVDs. No is it still 2021? Can I be yeah. a deity porn salesman? Yes. Actually, you know what? That works better. You, you can be a god You can be a god that sell, sells... Uh, Sells porn. It still works within the constraints of what I have planned tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that insight, Patty. That was good to know. Ah, perfect. Are we allowed? So I actually have a question, Kelly, for Patty. Are we allowed as straight people, as people, Nicole and I are the straightest of the of the group here. Mm-hmm. Um, that was a that was what Nicole said. <laughs> as the two straightest people. <laughs> Um, I was referring to Josh and I. I no, haven't. Okay. <laughs> I, was like, I haven't. I haven't. I haven't discussed anyone else's sexuality. But uh, are we as straight people allowed to say? I've heard conflicting things about whether or not queer is a is a term that's appropriate to be used. We'll we'll wait. This would be a great time for a musical sting. Hold on. I'll find. I'll find the most perfect musical sting while we wait. <laughs> It's the Ask Patty Questions. Yeah, can we just ask Patty questions for the next 30 minutes? Oh, All I know is I should have done the version where it mutes everyone's mics. <laughs> yeah, you think music's gonna fucking stop me from talking? Come on. Well, do you want do you want me to hit the the uh, the video again? Did we ever solve the mystery of why Patty is not joining us? I believe they said they're shy. Oh. Yeah, Patty. Patty's feeling a little self conscious this evening. Oh, okay. Patty hates us respect us to fail. I think that's a real reason. And we all I respect it. you, Patty, and I don't want you to feel any pressure to come on to this nightmare of a show if you don't want to. Patty, you do what works for you. But well, also, I feel like what works for Patty is that we play, I believe Patty said specifically, an hour of role playing starring David. I don't see anything about an hour on here. Yeah, I just see starring David. Mm hmm. People can't get well, enough of me. That's why I need Nicole. No longer in my hands. I'm just going to sit here and whatever happens, happens. Oh, God, I'm <laughs> ink. God damn my left-handedness. That's what we're here for, Patty. What if we just spend the next 20 minutes just praising Patty and, and building a Patty self-esteem? Yep. Why don't we go around table? Nicole, why don't you start? Tell us what your favorite thing about Patty is. My favorite thing about Patty is that... I really found them easy to gel with in the interview slash role play that we did. I felt like it was easy to bounce jokes off of them. Um, they were like quick to pick up on jokes. And also, they're... I don't remember who their character was, but I remember finding their character very fun to play with. You and forgot very Chad Flips. I can't believe Chad it. Chad Flips! That was <laughs> it! Oh my god! <laughs> I was like, I remember there was a voice, and I remember it being like very fun, but yeah, now I remember it was like a New York thing. And it was like a very like, oh yeah, Chad Flips. I'm like, yeah, like, yeah, he has a little skateboard. That was great. Yeah, that, that was the skateboarding bit. Patty really went <laughs> for it, and I loved it. Oh, Emily, yeah, now you absolutely. go. What's your favorite thing about Patty? Um, I actually went to high school uh, with Patty, for those who don't know. Uh, we were on Ooh. the improv team together. So that was a lot of fun back in the day. Um, yeah. And is yeah, this a real story or is this a bit? No, this is for this is legit. I, I know all of the cool people in Edmonton. Um, and yeah, Patty's just like a very kind pal and yeah, good person all around. Nice. All right, now it's your turn, Josh. What's your favorite thing about Patty? Well, I got to go back to the Chad flip thing, which was like, I, I have limited, I have, I've limited experience with Patty, and that being like the opener to uh, getting to know them um, was 
Chad Flip, which was incredible the entire time I was enjoying my time with it. Just watching. Yeah, the Brooklyn I accent, I think, really brought it together. I think that's what happened. The Brooklyn accent. I feel like Patty it. and Braden really said it was super high for every fucking follow up Kelly Quest show. That was like a fucking power hour of role playing. It was a very high bar in that A, Patty showed up, and B, Braden actually ran the game, which is not something we've seen in every subsequent episode. I'm glad that you brought that up, Kelly, because now it's your turn to tell us your favorite thing about Patty. Oh, no, like I said, I'm just here to lay back and see what happens. It's it's well, Nicole Trail after this all. Is, Kelly, this okay. is what okay. I'm asking you a question, and now we're waiting for your answer. Yeah, and as the host of the show, I demand that you compliment our only fan that tunes in every week. <laughs> what I like about Patty is how delicious Patty tastes on burger. Nailed it. Uh, so I just want to stress for a second here, Kelly, that... Uh, if the role playing doesn't happen tonight, which I feel like it's not going to, um, that still means that eighty percent of my shows have featured, or no, we only have, only have four. Seventy five percent of my shows have featured role playing. Well, I'll get back to you on that. I'm going to do some math on what percentage of Braden's shows have featured role playing. I'll, I'll, I'll crunch the numbers and come back to you. Josh, I also want to say it's my show. You don't ever have to explain yourself to Kelly. That's don't fair. feel like you Actually, need wait. to. I did a one-off, so technically eighty it is eighty percent of my shows that feature role playing. Uh, I did that one-off noir, which I still have planned in the background. If you ever need bonus fill shows, I mean, I will check in the in the lab here since I'm already in the lab, furiously scribbling away at my drafting desk. But I'm not sure that our secret never published, never will be practice sessions count. But you know, I'll, I'll get back to you. Also, my tabletop notes are a mess. I'm these are terrible. I've, I, I swear um, I've undiagnosed ADHD because it's all scribbles and then some words. And then David, Patty, David, think about Patty. Go. Me? Yeah. I was about to answer Matt, Patty's question. Patty, oh. to answer your first question, I'm assuming that Mac has either realized that this is going to be a bad idea for him to continue on this stream and is too polite to just remove himself from it, the stream, or uh, Patty's durable demon hamster creature has devoured his soul, uh, and he will never to be seen again. Good mm. luck. Well, and I mean, at least the puppy got snackos. As for a debate, as Kelly keeps saying, it's Nicole's show, so I feel like it's really up to Nicole what happens next. Yeah, I would like us to debate whether or not we think Patty is fantastic or amazing. Well, I will join the debate go. as soon as I pee. So. Uh, I will say that Patty is amazing. Uh, I was had the good fortune to hang out with Patty for the better part of the day when we had our uh right after our 24-hour live stream and we were doing our um what do you call it our uh dice command launch party and it was awesome to hang out with patty we had a great time um mm -hmm. and the only problematic thing that i've ever seen patty do is determine that his army and dice command was all men um but patty just leaned into it and then it was the bunker boys and they just uh, bunked up together it was great <laughs> hell yeah mm. All right, I'm gonna do it. Kelly, opinions on whether or not whether Patty is well. I, I think I'm gonna take a page out of the book out of noble, timeless political hero Tulsi Gabbard, and I'm just gonna abstain from voting. Can we talk about uh, our uh, provincial elections and our municipal elections? Can we talk about what a fucking piece of shit uh, Carrie Diot is? Oh yeah. Who dat? Uh, uh, you, know, you gotta, you gotta save it for the election night episode. What are we gonna talk about in election night if we talk about this now? Oh, trust me, Kelly. I can talk about what a piece of shit Carrie Diot is more than one show. Mm. Also, no one's gonna watch this one, so let's hear it. Hmm. I don't know. I get a single out this one, Nicole. I mean, this is the best show I've ever been on. Aww. Is this is the only here. show you've ever been on. No, I also wanted to say too, Kelly, if we're doing math, 100% uh, of the shows that I've been on have uh, not had any real stalling points because I keep moving the momentum of the show along. Mm. Yeah, I can confirm. Thank you. God, if only it's something to move the momentum of the show along, like tabletop role-playing. Mm. 
Yeah. We don't have bad. a GM anymore. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Um, you put the power this in is cold true. And I also, I also did vote that uh, to, to calm down the hordes of angry nerds who told me how uh, tabletop should be played. I did say that this is first and foremost a doing bits show and second and second most a role playing show. So, yeah, we're doing, we'll a bit. An we're doing an extended bit. We're doing a bit we called can, How Long yeah. role play. Before we're Kelly role loses people his who, who are doing bits. Role so, playing. We're taking out bathroom breaks. I'm next. All right. Yeah. I want to take uh, a suggestion from the audience here. Suggestion? So, a suggestion? Yeah. <laughs> what are you, Mike yeah. Tyson? You fucking listening bitch. Who are we doing take, improv now? I want to take a suggestion from the audience. So we're going to smoke a bunch of 5 MEO DMT and we're going to solve some mysteries. Those are the it, only two things that I know about Mike Tyson. I was about to say, are we, are we combining Joe Rogan and Mike Tyson now? Did you guys see that Joe Rogan got COVID? <laughs> Yeah, but then, like, so this is the thing that fucking pisses me off. Yeah, though. he cured himself with horse paste. Well, I was about to say, like, he, he took the ivermectin or whatever, which don't fucking do, as someone who grew up on a farm and gave this to actual cattle, don't fucking do that. And second of all... Why would you, why would you give I horse paste like to cattle? I feel like that's bad yeah. logic, because, I mean, you can give, like, ketamine to cattle, and I would never tell a human being never to take ketamine, right? Like... You can give but you, you can give you oats to cattle. Would you not eat oats? Eat Come on, Josh. Yeah, exactly. But you, but you don't condone ketamine. Anyways, um, the moral of the story is that the problem isn't so much that he's taken like ivermectin to like to cure his COVID. It's that he has enough money that he can get actual health care in America if he does fuck himself up. So like he'd be like, oh, I took the the horse dewormer. Oh, and uh, you know I'm gonna cure my COVID that way. When he can just be like, "Oh, I feel like shit. I'm gonna go to an actual hospital and pay the, money." For the thing it. is, what I read was that he didn't just take I ivermectin. He also took like vitamin B and like 400 other like actual medicine things. So like yeah. it wasn't like he just took ivermectin and was like, "Oh, my work here is done." He took ivermectin and a shit ton of vitamin D and like a fucking saline drip and like 400 other like actual medicine yeah. things. Yeah, and so that's the thing. Like that's what fucking pisses me off because he's got the economic access to that. Whereas Joe Blow, who doesn't believe in the vaccine, but listens to Joe Rogan, would be like, oh, well, he put out on his Twitter that he took ivermectin. So I'm going to take ivermectin and shit out my intestinal lining. Is I that, can see why they this, made that connection, because uh, they have the same first name, and they were probably thinking, well, you know, okay, it's which, how, far, yes, how different am I is, really? That is an effect of humans taking ivermectin, is you will shit out your fucking intestinal lining. So Ooh. do not do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I work in a lab that studies the microbiome, and I, I, based on the few things that I know about your microbiome, is you probably shouldn't shoot out your intestinal lining. Yeah, yeah. Ivermectin is again a <laughs> pest. I'm not a doctor. It's a parasite dispersant, for lack of a better term. Yeah, it's a dewormer, isn't it? Yeah, it will dewormer, and you can also use it for other pests as well. Like, like I said, we used ivermectin on our cattle when we had cattle when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. Um. Because it gets rid of parasites, which, fun fact, COVID is not a parasite. But oh, tell me... Uh, but Joe Rogan right. is! <laughs> Josh, Ew. please, be honest. Tell me when you were a kid, you took a little, just a little taste for yourself. No, I did get shock prodded by my dad, though. Mm. Did that cure your diseases? Dad. You've met my dad, Nicole. You know exactly he's the type of person to do that. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm familiar with the, the concept of child abuse. Uh, Emily, you were going to say something? <laughs> yeah, I was going to ask if I can play this uh, ivermectin advertisement that's super legit that I found. You yeah, are the producer. Absolutely. You can do yeah. anything you want. Mm -hmm. As long as you have the video saved to your computer. Yeah. You can do but, anything. Um, I can do it like this way, I think. Oh, yeah. And oh, shit. Yeah. Women can do whatever they want, but then also gets really pissy and passive aggressive when they don't actually do what he wants. I'm ex <laughs> I'm extremely excited that she's uh, doing well, what she wants. We I don't think we have any audio. I'll narrate this. There's no audio. Oh no. Oh Hold no. on. I don't yeah. know how to are you are you I can do loud? subtitles. I don't know how to make the sound happen. You do the subtitles, I'll read them out loud for us. Yeah. Okay. Perfect, thank you. Now more than ever, it's important for Americans to take care of their health when it comes to protecting yourself. Against the COVID-19 virus, the FDA-approved vaccine might not be the right choice for patients who are allergic to reality. That's why there's ivermectin. 
The coveted 19 treatment option for real patriots with ivermectin, you can say nay to the FDA. <laughs> take that into your own hooves. Don't take ivermectin if you plan on driving, operating heavy machinery, or if you're wearing your good pants. <laughs> Side effects of ivermectin include uncontrollable vomiting and diarrhea, the inability to pronounce Kamala Harris's name, or a sudden urge to speak to the manager. Some patients taking ivermectin have reported hallucinations of lizard people in the halls of Congress. And in rare cases, finding Joe Rogan's podcast helpful and or informative. Call your doctor if you begin to experience delusions of grandeur about the supremacy of your race. Homicidal thoughts or actions towards your elected representatives can occur without warning. Join the herd. Talk to your large animal veterinarian about ivermectin today. Or don't, because you're not a sheep. Point. I also feel like it's pronounced Kamala. Just want to say, you said Kamala. Well, I'm on ivermectin. Well, maybe maybe he took ivermectin. <laughs> Getting rid of I that COVID. That, I hear that's good for treating COVID, so good for you. <clears throat> What I like is that Kelly's just uh, having a private conversation with Emily on that. Yeah, well, I'm giving I'm giving some behind the scenes uh, tech support to the producer of the show without any credit, without anyone needing to see it, because I am a woke bay ally. I think it's particularly amazing when someone calls himself an ally. It really lets you know that they're an ally. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what I like about saying that is that you don't have to do anything actually for a cause. If you just say that you're an ally, you can you like what, do no no what you need is, about your life. I was about to say you do the bare minimum of just not being homophobic. I mean, look, Emily's a producer. She put it right there on the screen. <laughs> I did not put that there. <laughs> <laughs> right there. I didn't uh, do it. I mean, me and one of my buddies had a great bit going for the longest time where I would just say, like, the shittiest things. And then he would be like, yeah, he would follow up with, like, yeah, Josh is just, like, the greatest ally. <laughs> so good. It was Wes, by the way. Yeah. Wes, Wes was my bit partner there. Mm -hmm. I'm glad he follows me around on my bullshit. Yeah. He's got to know. You guys are locked in for life. I feel like it, I feel like with your friends from high school into your thirties, then that's just it. You're locked in for yeah, life. Yeah, they're not getting away at this point. What yeah. if you didn't have friends in high school, Nicole? Oh well, I guess you're locked into that too. What if you dropped out of high school? Ooh. Well, you'd be my father. And mine. <laughs> I was yeah. homeschooled, and I have a friend who doesn't have a high school diploma, but she has her master's. Damn, Which good for her. That's awesome. That's so, a... you never know. Yeah. That is like a, it's a rare but familiar story where it's like the public education system wasn't working for them, so they dropped out and went to university. My uncle did that as well. No, she was actually homeschooled, I think, the whole time. Oh, okay. Oh, I see. So do, uh, do you guys, do we talk now about how the public school system is failing us or? Oh, no. I mean, <laughs> this I is just going to get depressing. Uh, I mean, Damon still doesn't have his GED because he left school at like 16 because Ridge Valley, mm. Ridge Valley with mental illness. <laughs> True story. My, one of my dad's high school <laughs> teachers, um, my dad was skipping class um, pretty regularly. And so his high school science teacher said, I'll make you a deal. If you never come to, come to my class again, I won't fail, or I won't have you suspended. This is the Mr. A story again. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, okay. Don't make it sound like it's like everyone knows this story. You've known me since no. you're in kindergarten. But it's, yeah, it's like, I feel like that's like a, it's a, there's, that's a bit of an attitude. I mean, I, I like to think that that's like fading, and I don't think that Mr. A would be able to do that or would do that these days, but like, that's like a, it's not a great statement about our like public health care or public school system where it's like the teacher was like, get out of my face and I won't make problems for you. Yeah. It's like, uh, how I, mean, I, would, I think that also like it, it obviously happens in city schools as well, but I feel like there's a lot of like fall through the cracks in like rural schools because a lot of kids have like farming backups or like, yeah, just go into the patch. Yeah, go into the patch. That was. Why would a you graduate? Thing. The higher you when you're 16. 
I mean, that was still the thing when we, you and I were in high school. It was still just like, well, if you have problems, get into the patch. Yup. And that's only 10 years ago. Yeah, that's fair. Or 12 years ago now. Fuck, I'm getting old. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, I don't know how that happened, but it's like, suddenly, age happened. Yeah, suddenly I'm 30. Mm-hmm. Actually, uh, did you guys see that Blue's Clues uh, thing that happened on Twitter? Uh, no. We're so tired of hearing about this Blue's Clues bullshit. No, no, because no, there's, there's a good shit shit post that came along from that. Um, and it was like, because the Blue's Clues guys came in and he's doing like this whole wholesome thing where it's like, look at you. Look what you've done since then. And uh, and then there's just like, on the final panel, it's just George from Seinfeld, like chips on his face and he's holding a beer. <laughs> oh, okay, so it's like trying to be, it's like, is it? It's like an old blues clues thing that's like blowing up again. That someone's like, uh, no, no. Up? One of the old, one of the old hosts came back because he kind of like dropped off the face of the earth. Okay, that thing. he was just like not the host one day. I've always figured he was on drugs or something like that. Uh -huh. um, and then yeah, they did they did a post the other day where they're just like, yeah, like um, you know, like I we just I left kind of suddenly. I just wanted to let you know that I've never stopped thinking. About, like again, all this wholesome shit where it's just like. Uh, you know, it's been 20 years or whatever, and look what we've all done, kind of thing. And then, yeah. Oh, okay. Someone, so this, to, okay, so so someone just had to ruin it, basically. I was gonna say, let me, like, get this straight. This guy came out of hiding. He tried to post some wholesome, sweet, like, uplifting content on the internet, and the internet <laughs> ripped him to shreds. They didn't rip- no, most people are still enjoying the wholesomeness, there's just- the- 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 the, the bottom tiers of the internet that just can't ever be happy. <laughs> The so, underbelly. Um, I would, I would see. They don't let me just post images, so I can't, I can't just send the meme. So, fuck it. Mm. Moral of the story is it's fucking hilarious, and my dead heart laughed. Uh, okay. Well, Maybe. looks like, uh, looks like everybody's gone except for us. Uh, well, is, is everyone gone but us? I'm, I'm on the big screen. There we go. I mean, how do you define us? Mm -hmm. How do you define gone? Yeah. That's like the Beatles said, I am he, as you are he, as we are, you are me, and we are all together. Did you get a confirmation about Mac not being well, Kelly, or are you just making shit up? Oh, that was most definitely Emily writing in the chat. She's the producer. No, it was not. I, I, like no the, I, still, I just want to reiterate how much I like the fake empowerment that Kelly gives to the two female participants in the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I really appreciate the like micromanaging and the constant like trying to like shove us towards a certain direction. But it's your so, show. But, but, but it's it's just insisting that it's Nicole's show. Yeah, along with simultaneously being like, you're the producer, you can do whatever you want. You're the host, it's your show. And then micromanaging from behind the scenes. Mm. Yeah, I it's mean all... that's uh, that's just par for the course. It's all very Joss Whedon of you. Oh God! <laughs> nice. <laughs> Thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm the <clears throat> opposite of micromanaging. I'm looking at my phone. I'm mm -hmm. very, I'm very glad that he's getting his comeuppance <laughs> finally. <laughs> he's well, he's given up now. He's like been trying to push the game for the last half hour. Mm -hmm. You guys are talking, talking about two Whedon. different people. Josh is talking yeah. about Josh Whedon. I'm talking about Josh Whedon, who totally deserves oh. to get fucking shit on because he's a piece of shit. Yeah, I. This is recent that I found this recently that I found this out, which is very sad. I feel like, yeah, yeah. Man, I'll be, he, he writes really good women, or he, you know, there's like he writes, or there's very. I guess I don't. He doesn't write, but like there's very strong women characters in all of his shows, and like I always, always, I always love them, and. Just disappointing. Anyways, go on. What are you drinking? <laughs> Who's supposed what, to go what? on? <laughs> I don't know. Whoever was yeah, you talking. Went the, you went for that beer pull, and now I just have to know what beer you're drinking. Um, It's a, a Belgian cherry D-I-P-A, which I don't know what the D stands for. Double. Double IPA. Duke. <laughs> uh, a double IPA. Oh, that's even worse than a regular IPA. It's, I only have IPAs in my fridge right now because Ryan and I buy the same amount of beer, but he drinks half as much as I do. Wait, what? And, 
So Nicole drinks twice as fast as her as her partner, so he ends up having a surplus of his beer, and now Nicole is forced to drink his beer rather yeah, than I'm the just, beer. I'm just, I'm just, I was just more wondering why when uh, when Ryan turned into such a pussy. <laughs> Are we using pussy as a pejorative, Josh? Because that's not a very feminist ally of you. It's it's not, but it's it's a house term, and I have to use the house rules still. You really don't. <laughs> I do. Oh. I feel like Josh is on a quest to get himself cancelled. First, the whole boys will be boys. I mean, yeah. thing, and also, he's that. blaming it on the house, which I find a also, little bit like disconcerting because my that's like where my partner lived for twelve years. So, also like the fact that I haven't been cancelled at this point is amazing. Anyways, tell Ryan that he sucks and he's stupid. I oh, I do every night um, okay. while I'm beating him. Um, <laughs> Let's throw some domestic abuse into the soul chat. Oh, no, it's not domestic abuse. It's like a whole kink thing. Don't worry about oh, it. Oh, okay. Um, okay, as long as it's consensual, I'm okay with that. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, anyways, uh, IPs are gross. Should we get to this game? Kelly. <laughs> oh, God, so no. excited. Oh. It's like when you tell it's like when you like you're sitting in the living room and you're like, oh, you do you want to go for a walk? And your dog's like <laughs> <laughs> That was cold. That was fucking cold as well. I thought that saying nothing was the only way I was not gonna get yelled at, but apparently not moving is also the only way I'm not gonna get yelled at. So this is the new plan. Oh, <laughs> Kelly, please in, in, work with us here. Come in on the chat here. Cancel me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 no, I finally learned the lesson that Mac learned a long time ago, which is the only safe bet is to be invisible. <laughs> You'll notice out. how few negative things anyone has said about Mac. He's a very smart Here's, man. And can I, can I just make a can I make a quick amendment here? Even when Mac is here, nobody says anything negative about him. So mm. <laughs> it may not be the lack of presence that's protecting Mac, and more the fact that Mac is not you. Well, so like, I don't think anyone said anything mean about me. I think. Well, I think it helps if you're actually a good person, whereas everyone in the chat knows I'm not. So mm. it's like I'm fair I've, game at that point. Also, have you tried getting a cute dog? Uh, it's not a dog. Cats. It's a gremlin. It's a gerbil. <laughs> uh, I mean, Nicole, you you might see my potential new cats this weekend. <gasps> I would love that. I'm I'm planning on getting two cats because mm -hmm. I'm a very I'm a very lonely man. So Josh is really worried about his damage deposit, so he won't hang up a single picture in his house. But he's going to get two cats. <laughs> I'm also uh, legit. smart play. <laughs> Um, I, I am looking forward to getting cats, though. I've had cats since my last apartment when I had a, when I had a Reba, Reba, which by the way, which by the way was named by Nicole because the cat did not have a name until Nicole watched her for a week. While I was yeah, there. yeah. Josh was like, "Can you have sit? Can you like cat sit for me?" And I was like, "Yeah, sure." And I like come over and I had to hang out with this cat, and I was like, "It doesn't have a name, though." Um, so I gave it a name. Her yeah, name so was then, Reba. Then it, was, it was Reba after that, which I didn't realize was the reference because you kept saying Reba because she's fancy. Yeah. And I've never listened to any Reba in my entire life. Uh, well, there's Reba had a problem on uh, country music television. Yeah, absolutely she did. It was awful. Um, but it had an actor that I liked in it, so that's fine. You know who had a good sitcom? Oh, Whoopi Goldberg? Just kidding. That was also awful. What? Uh, Whoopi Goldberg? Yes, you come? Yeah, it was called Whoopi. It was oh. awful. It got canceled after like two seasons, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe even one. Did it make it to two seasons? I, I don't remember. I feel like it was it was at most two seasons. Mm. Here's okay. Here's my problem. Problem one with the show. It was called Whoopi. It starred Whoopi Goldberg. Her character's name was Mavis. What? Uh, yeah. Uh, so it got one season, it got 22 episodes, and then it was cancelled. Was the show about her having sex? Uh, <laughs> no, but that would have been good. 
Um, that could have been, been a network executive in the 90s. <laughs> I think uh, it was in the early 2000s. <clears throat> it was, 2004. Uh, Whoopi Goldberg starred in this comedy as one-hit wonder Mavis Ray, a cigarette-smoking, alcohol-drinking, menopausal, and especially opinionated hotelier. The former one-hit wonder runs her own small hotel in New York City and does it any way she wants. There's your the good thing about hotels was the Jimmy Fox show. Also the Wayne Brothers. Show. The I... Sweet Life of Zack and Cody. <laughs> I, uh... I think there might be a generational gap here. Uh, <laughs> uh, Shit's Creek. I didn't Hell watch yeah. I didn't Shit's Creek is about motels, Nicole, not hotels. Shit's mm. Creek is also very gay and I, I've heard good things about it, but I, I don't watch a lot of TV, so I'm unfortunately... I'm about as ignorant about television as you are about movies. <laughs> oh, no, that's so sad. How much television do you watch, Josh? Uh, like, Well, I literally don't have a cable program at all at this point. Um, a cable No one program. has cable. Yeah, Josh, nobody has cable. You just pirate that What shit. is a cable program? Oh, well, it's called Netflix. Oh, well, I don't have a Netflix either. <laughs> okay. Uh, I, I like that you call it a Netflix. It's like Look, calling I've, it the Google. This is too much I, even I, food even for me. I'm going to touch that. I have, I've, I've settled squarely into technological ignorance at this point. You got all those sweet I, I, fucking Xbox 360 games, though. Yeah, it, exactly. When did the Xbox 360 come out? 2005? It was 2005. Yes. So, you know, only only 17 years ago. That's practically brand new. Anyone want to check that math for him, or I'm just going to leave it? Uh, yeah, uh, no, I've been here. Sorry, 16 years. Nah, I only do plus math or, for school. Plus, plus or minus one year. How does that sound? Plus or minus one year. <laughs> you make that argument before, <laughs> not to me, Josh. <laughs> but, uh... That was an age of consent joke, Nicole. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, totally. I'd rock Kelly back with that one. Uh, but yeah, I saw no. you practicing how you fucking no hair uh, of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, He's I just mean, getting lower and lower in his chair. He's slowly, slowly turning invisible. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we've, we've still got his beady little fucking eyes, though. You know who he looks like? He looks like fucking. He looks like a dig dug now. Like <laughs> diglet? I don't know. A diglet? Yes. Yeah. 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 Hell but yeah. uh, no, no. I mean, I'm not a huge TV person to begin with. I like movies. I like that like two and a half hour sweet spot for long. What's your top five movies, Josh? Uh, Eraserhead, Anti Porno. Okay, we're done. We're done. If you're gonna start with a fucking David Lynch movie, I don't want to hear it anymore. Why? What What is your problem with David Lynch? Well, first of all, his name's David. I don't have a problem with David Lynch. I have a problem with pretentious David Lynch fans who start with Eraserhead. Okay. Their top five all time well, movies. Well, first of all, first of all. There are David Lynch fans in there who you're talking about, which I'm not. Now, if David had ever watched the show, you would know that uh, favorite guest of the show, Patty, previously brought up David Lynch's Eraserhead in episode one of this show, and that's all I'm going to say. Um, if you would let me finish, though, I do have more. I won't. I think I've made it clear that I'm not you. <laughs> yeah. Everyone should watch anti porno, is what I'm saying. Anti porno. So is it like just a, is it just like a bunch of images that make you unhorny? No, no. It features explicit lesbian sex in like the first half of it. Perfect. I'm in. Um, it's very good. You know what else features explicit lesbian sex in the first half of it? Uh, blue <laughs> color. Porn? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Nicole's DVD porn. <laughs> I mean, blue's the warmest color works for that as well. I still have not watched that. It's very good. Uh, the sex scenes take too long. Mm. Yeah, just like regular sex. Am I right, fellas? <laughs> I mean, this is the constant problem with like art house films that feature sex is that they're just like, ah, it's artistic if we just film these people literally having sex for twenty minutes. And you're like, Gosh, oh, have you seen Swallow? I've not seen Swallow. No. Is it about birds? No, it's about a woman <laughs> who has uh, obsession about swallowing things unhealthily. Uh, oh. I've seen, if we're going to that... No, we're not. We're not. Let me just... <laughs> <laughs> Save it for Emily's podcast. We don't want to hear about it. That's fair. But yeah, 
moral of the story is that you cut me off in my top five, so you, you got a race red, and that's it. And you cut yourself off, off your top five, Josh. I'm doing us all a favor. <laughs> all right, David, top five movies. Let's go. Bad Boys 2. Number oh one. My God. <laughs> 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 How much do you want to bet that I've seen zero of the movies on your Oh, top yes. Yeah, let's bet on this. Bad Boys oh, 2. Man. The Fallen. Um... That's good. How fun! Uh, Bad Boys Two, The Fallen, not fa- not The Fallen, just Fallen. I don't know. I'm not a big like I've seen a million movies. I don't I don't necessarily care that much about any of them. Just Bad Boys Two. I was gonna say Bad Boys Two for one, two, and three, and then Fallen for four and five. But like Bad Boys Two is even the best Bad Boys movie. Uh, first of all, yes, it is. It's one hundred percent the best Bad Boys movie. Oh my god, it's such a bad movie. It's the best. <laughs> How do you, you feel about the Rush Hour movies? If you had to rank the Rush Hour movies, oh, uh, Rush Hour One, to? Rush Hour Two, Rush Hour Three, in the order of release, progressively <laughs> worse. Can we just talk about good Jackie Chan movies instead, like Police Night, Story? Night? I never watched that one, but I did watch Legend of the Drunken Master, and I remember really enjoying it. But I was quite young, so it might have uh, sucked. I have both Police Stories on Blu-ray, so if you ever want to watch good Jackie Chan, please let me know. <laughs> okay, Emily, what's a Jackie Chan movie that you've seen? Uh, Shanghai Nights. None of them. No. Oh, Shanghai Nights? Boy. Shanghai Noon. Please not Shanghai Noon. Please not Shanghai Noon. <laughs> Please Shanghai Noon. No, no, it's so I've bad. Seen any. You've never seen any Jackie Chan movies. Okay, that's a problem. No, like maybe bits on like TV a super long time ago. Mm. But like... I feel like- if it I makes you feel, like- feel any better, Emily, neither have I, so... Jesus mm. Christ, Kelly. <laughs> Um, I feel like you should add that to your podcast. I feel like um, either Shanghai Noon or Rush Hour. Probably Rush Hour. That's a Please classic. Don't watch. Please don't watch either of those. Please watch Rush Hour. <laughs> okay, we'll see. Uh, I'm looking, at, I'm looking at the top 200 movies for 2000 to see if any of these uh, jump out. Oh, Mystic River was really good. I'll, I would add Mystic River to my top five. Mystic River. I don't think I saw that one. It was with Sean N and um, who's the guy? Who's the guy from Shawshank Redemption? Shawshank Redemption is also in my top five. Oh, Ooh, you know I just I just watched that for the podcast. David. The episode Hell is yeah. not out yet, but it's coming. Oh. David, you're killing me. Would right you now, like buddy. to spoil the episode of your podcast by just telling everything you know about Shawshank Redemption on our? Why? Because I don't fucking pick pretentious fucking art movies, and I pick movies that are fun and interesting. They are fun and interesting. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going, I'm going, the right word for I'm going Shasha Bad Boys 2. I'm going Fallen. I'm going... What was the last one I just said? Shawshank Redemption? No, he said uh, Mystic River. Mystic oh, River. Right. He said the guy from Shawshank Redemption. I my top five. Mystic River was really good, though. Mm. Never even heard of it. Yeah, I don't know. I haven't seen it. Um... You know what was mystery, a bad movie? Neo noir mystery crime drama directed and scored by Clint Eastwood. Okay. Sean Penn. Oh, Gran Torino. Gran Torino, but only because it's the best comedy movie I've ever seen. <laughs> Gran Torino? Oh. So here's my story about Gran Torino. We were in the theater. It was me, my friend Kevin, and the girl I was dating. Um, and I don't know. Has anyone seen Gran Torino? Josh has. Has anyone else seen Gran Torino? Yes. Yeah, yeah, it made me the anti racist I am today. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, wait, I can't do a Gran Torino is starring um, some racist old guy. What's his name? Uh, Clint Eastwood. Uh, Clint Eastwood. Mel Brooks. Charlton Heston. Mel Brooks. Clint Eastwood. Starring Clint Eastwood. And he plays like just this old white racist guy. And like, here's a quote from the movie. So, it's literally like just him yelling racial slurs for two hours. Um, he roll. He's driving his beat up old Chevy pickup truck. Rolls up next to a trio of black guys who are just like minding their own business, standing on the side of the road. He rolls down his window and he says, "What are you spooks up to?" <laughs> and I was just like, "What is this movie?" So like yeah. throughout the entire movie, like it's just blatant racism after blatant racism, and I'm just laughing my ass off. It's not meant to be a comedy. It's and then it was what are you spooks up to? Where I just like I. I fucking doubled over with laughter, and uh, that's yeah. when the rest of the people in the theater finally realized it was okay to laugh at how ridiculous this movie was. Yeah, no, it was. It, it was like, ah, uh, yes, we'll make uh, Clint Eastwood the sympathetic old racist guy who learns not to be racist by the end of the movie. He did like, though. 
he, he was not sympathetic, and he didn't learn not to be racist. <laughs> no, no, yeah. oh, that's no. what made it funny about the whole thing is that it was just like this was their idea. You can see it like the framing of the narrative is this is what they were going for, but mm. it never actually pays off because he just continues being racist to everyone. Yeah. Did he not makes, stick the landing. <laughs> he makes he makes two friends that are people of color, and then they're like, "Well, that's good enough. He doesn't have to stop being racist." <laughs> now he <laughs> just have to have a black friend. Yeah, he takes yeah. The Southeast Asian under his wing, and thus. Yeah, Racism exactly. Is solved. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's uh, my yeah. I watched Green Book with my sister in law, and she was like, "It's so good." And I watched it, and I was like, <laughs> yeah, "I don't have a top like, five for you." What's that? I don't have a top five for Josh. It's just gonna have to be Bad Boys Two, oh. All In, and then whatever else I said. Whatever other bullshit. This is, this is Mr. like Grand Torino. Uh, um, not, yeah. not actually Grand Torino. It's not. <laughs> I'm, I'm <laughs> writing that down. David Plamondon endorses Grand Torino. Please watch it. Um, put, it on, uh, put it on my hey Wikipedia. Guys, important question: mm -hmm. Is Kelly dead? No, he just <laughs> only on the inside. Only where it matters. Also, uh, just wondering. Josh, you I haven't criticized my choice of Fallen. Have you seen Fallen? I have not seen Fallen. Holy fuck! Fallen is so amazing. Denzel Washington. 1989, Denzel Washington, John Goodman at the fucking height of his career. Amazing. I cannot donkey you for the fall <laughs> one. I, I, I will say that right now. Uh, but I would say, white people are actually the worst for, like, anti you can just you can just, let, you can just end the sentence there. <laughs> yes. I mean, yes. I feel like the internet would like, totally agree with you right there. But, like, the, the anti-racism film, because this happened when, like, three boards uh, in... Three billboards outside of uh, something Missouri... Three billboards out of Missouri. Three billboards out of... Yeah. Fuck, I know this movie. I watched that movie. That yeah. movie was fun. I like yeah. that movie. <laughs> oh, did you? I fucking hated it. Because uh, everyone was just like, oh my god, it's so profound. And you're like, it's people trying the bare minimum not to be racist. Was that movie about racism? Honestly, literally the only thing I remember about that movie is fucking Dinklebot playing a fucking trying to be a regular person. Uh, out of Ebbing, Missouri. That's what it was. Mm. Uh, through billboards outside of Ebbing, Missouri. If you're calling Francis McDormand Dinglebot, I'm going to be very upset. <laughs> no. So what happened was Peter Dinklage was a voice actor for the video game Destiny, and yeah, he did like the most fucking phoned in, like boring, lazy fucking voice acting for this robot. So every time they started calling him Dinglebot, it was so bad <laughs> that the publishers of the game had to go in and get somebody else. I think it was Nathan Fillion or some other famous nerd actor to go in and re-record and replace. Um, uh, Dinklebot's voice acting. That's how bad it was. It Damn. was so bad. It was it was really bad. Um, but yeah, no. Um, you know what movie I didn't one? like? Which one? Django Unchained. Uh, yeah, because it was a bad movie. And Oh, Donnie Brasco. Donnie Brasco is really good, too. Probably one of the best uh, Marvel movies. Quentin Tarantino has been a hack for like the last decade and a half. So Yeah, so I can't remember what the last Tarantino movie. I think it was before Once Upon a Time in Hollywood came out. And I was like, oh, maybe I'll go back and watch all the Tarantino movies because I liked some of them. Mm -hmm. And I made it as far as like 20 minutes into Kill Bill. And I was like, ooh, I'm not doing this anymore. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no. Um, I I did not like Inglorious Bastards. I didn't like Django Unchained. I was like tepid on uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. See, I wanted to like Django Unchained, but the fucking sound produ the sound production of that movie is awful. It is. And like there's like a few good scenes, like the, the clan scene where they're like it's funny. It's just but, a bunch of bumbling idiots. Oh, yeah. they're they're so dumb. And it's like but A, the movie takes way too long. And I think at this point, oh um The Hateful Eight, that was a garbage movie, and that was coming into my sort of like train of thought here. What's the other? There was another one that was like the Hateful Eight that I, I think I enjoyed. Um, it was around the same time. The Magnificent Seven remake? Maybe, I don't know. Uh, yes, I've seen movies and have opinions on them. Uh, okay. David Emily, really liked you... The Ridiculous Six. That's what he's thinking of. Oh, <laughs> no. Uh, Emily, no. What, what, what Tarantino movies have you seen? I'm not sure if I've seen any of them. Emily, what's your favorite Netflix television show? Um, oh, hold on. I'm looking up Quentin Tarantino. My I favorite like, television show. I feel like there should be some Tarantino shows on your podcast or like some coming up. You know, if you like Kill Bill is like a classic one that everyone's seen. And yeah, we've talked about like Kill Bill. One. Yeah. 
Um, Pulp Fiction is usually the I one really... talk about. Oh, yes. I've seen Pulp Fiction. For yeah. Oh, so okay. That's, that's yeah. What's your like, did we do favorite one? TV show, Emily? Um, I really like Avatar The Last Airbender. Mm-hmm. There's, there's worse YouTube. decisions than that. <laughs> That is, that is a compliment from Josh. I know it sounded like lukewarm, but no, no, I actually like Avatar: The Last Airbender particularly. All right, well, it's been uh, it's been real fun. I'll see you nerds later. Oh, fuck. <laughs> what I was you say, nerds like, never. Uh, Quentin Tarantino has an obsession, I think, at this point of setting up situations where he's allowed to put the N word in his scripts. Mm. It's a hot, hot take from Josh. I mean, it's not a hot take. I feel like this is more of just a. Like you're like okay, well, Django and Chain that makes sense. Oh yeah, Pulp Fiction that makes sense. like hey, 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 you see a sign out front that says "Dead Nigger Storage"? Hey, you can you say that, not me. Uh, my it's the moral of the story it's is a that, quote from the movie. You're allowed to quote movies. The moral of the story is that like at at the end of the day, it's more like <laughs> I said that getting... my dad tried quoting Tarantino to me on text, and I said that text back to him, and he's like, "Why are you being racist?" I'm like, "You can't quote <laughs> Tarantino movies. Tarantino. You do not use the most famous Tarantino." Everyone, we apologize. David had a heated gamer moment. <laughs> <laughs> but it was like, it's one of the things where you start getting to like the hateful eight, where it's just like they're still they're still going with it. And you're like Tarantino, like do you just do you just like putting this in your script? Like, are you okay over there? You between that and your foot fetish, which he totally has. Watch one time. Josh, I, I'm going to stop you right there. We don't kink shame Do on not. this show. Yeah. If you kink shame, you don't get invited to the poly orgies. This is why Nicole's in charge of the again. Show. <laughs> this is this. I can't, I keep getting disinvited to these poly orgies for some reason. Yeah, he says disinvited <laughs> like the invite came and then people are revoking it, but yeah. Yeah, no, it's just, ugh. We Lost Talking to Smoking Barrels is a good movie. <laughs> Hell yeah. Mm. You, oh, God. What's the oh. other one that's exactly like Snatch. that? Snatch. Yes. I really like Snatch. I, I'm okay with Snatch. <laughs> <laughs> someone's going to take that. <laughs> someone's going to take that clip. I was going to say, Josh, if you want to get canceled in Alberta, are you saying that white people are the worst? Is like someone's going to take oh. that clip and like post I, it everywhere? And that's just good. Josh, I want you to watch Fallen between now and next week, and I want to hear what you think about it. Okay, uh, I will just a second here. Uh, through the magic of the internet and nothing illegal at all. Emily, yeah, guess- Snatch, have you seen it? I don't, really, I don't like movies that much. Highly recommend. Um, Brad Pitt well, is fantastic in it. I don't. I will be taking no Brad commentary. Brad Pitt is fantastic in Snatch. Yes. Gotcha. <laughs> yes, nice. I would love. I love Brad Pitt in Snatch. Once That's- again, once it's, again, Nicole, don't you a, think Brad Pitt's accent was racist in Snatch? Since we're on the subject. It's not was a it? movie. It's not a new movie, Josh. But I would also think I put uh, Into the Spider Verse in my top five. Uh, Into the Spider Verse is pretty mm. damn good, actually. I think oh, Into the Spider Verse is like it's you like seen it the, literally the best uh, the best superhero movie mm. I've ever seen. You know what? I would not uh, <clears throat> if if the Dark Knight did not exist, I would I would agree with you. Was the Dark Knight the good one or was that the boring one? That was that was the middle one. That was the, the, okay. The, so yeah. I remember I love the Dark Knight, and then I was like, I don't know, it was like three years ago. I was like, oh, I want to go back and rewatch the fucking good Batman movie. And I I loaded up. I went. I think I got it from the library. I think it was, wasn't on Netflix. And I put it in. I'm like an hour into it. And I'm like, when does this movie get good? Like the first one, the first Christian Bale movie is so fucking bad. It's yeah, that's so Batman good. Begins. It's yeah, Batman terrible. Begins is awful compared to the Dark Knight. And I was yeah, like. No, no. I was like, when does fucking when does the Joker show up? Like, when does this movie actually get interesting? <laughs> yeah, no. So the Dark Knight is good. Um, the other ones you don't have to worry about. Uh, Dark Knight Rises is okay. Batman Begins is boring. Uh, I think my Into favorite one is, is the good. one with Jim Carrey as the Riddler. Okay, Nicole, you need to stop right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, Into the Spider Verse. I quite so, anyways. Like um, of. What about Edge of Tomorrow? What's your thoughts on Edge of Tomorrow? I have not watched it because I haven't watched a Tom Cruise movie since like Mission Impossible Two. Highly recommend Edge of Tomorrow. Great movie. I uh, the book I think is actually quite a bit better. It's I so I didn't know that the Edge of Tomorrow was based off of a book, but then I watched the movie. I really liked it. It's probably one of my favorite sci-fi movies ever. And then I read the book and I was actually fucking blown away by like how different and how much better the book was than the movie, which is not, also not a hot take and typically my stance. But like they really missed the mark in the. Um, in the movie compared to the, what the show is, or what the book is. Really? <laughs> okay. Uh, 
Okay. Um, I'm gonna probably head out. So, <laughs> what guys, did you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, uh, like, I feel so. like I feel like it's been like a couple of like probably like five to ten minutes of like you and Josh talking back and forth about the shows that you like, and then me and Emily like interjecting for a moment. So wait, wait, Nicole, do you have time for one more piece of movie trivia? <laughs> I see where this is going, Emily. Do you have your uh, Kelly stupid joke button ready? I uh-huh. just... so I sure do. Cool, great. Go for it, Kelly. Let's hear it. Oh uh, man, I've 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 kind of forgotten a lot of it, but there was this um there was this movie that Matt Damon made and he was like a spy, but he couldn't remember who he was, and he spent the movie trying to figure it out. Born and they were trying to show this one scene where he was like trying to get through these streets in some European city, but he was they were doing that thing where they didn't like properly get the permits for the street. And so all these local residents were mad. They were fucking around. So they started throwing those uh, Capri Sun packs at him. And he was (laughs) completely covered by red Capri Suns. And uh, so, yeah, he was at that time born under punches.